The very word secrecy is repugnant in a free and open society. And we are, as a people, inherently and historically opposed to secret society, to secret oath, and to secret proceedings. Waking humanity, one soul at a time. This is The World You Don't Know Radio Show with your host, Nick O'Connell. Now, good evening, ladies and gentlemen. You're very welcome along to this week's edition of The World You Don't Know. With myself, Mick O'Connell, and I do have a guest lined up in the wings. I've got uh, my good friend Alan from Open Your Mind Radio coming on now in a second. And uh, we're going to have a mixed bag tonight. We're just going to be doing a catch-up about what's going on around the world at this particular moment. And in particular, we're going to be most likely talking about what's going on in Syria and the uh, the bullshit excuse that the Americans and the British and the French use to go and invade that country again and uh, drop a load of missiles on it for no reason. Um whatsoever i mean there has been absolutely no evidence that um assad or any of his um what they like to call a regime i'll say his government um committed any act of gassing their own citizens or poisoning them or using chemical weapons on them i mean there's no evidence whatsoever and uh, you know it's, it's been less than a week um since the alleged attack in syria and within a week they're dropping missiles on the country this has more to do with getting rid of Assad once and for all and installing a, a globalist central bank into that country because it's one of the only countries in the world that doesn't have one at the moment and that's probably one of the biggest reasons that they're cleaning up all these countries in the Middle East. Anyway, I'm going to go straight to Al. Good evening, Al. Hello. How are you doing? You okay? I'm grand, Al. How are you? Not too bad. Sorry, I had that muted there. No problem, Al. Um, listen, you're very welcome on to the show again, Al. I mean, it, it, it's great that you've come on a, a short notice as per usual, but um, listen, thanks very much for coming on. No problem at all. Glad to be on. That's brilliant. Now listen, I don't know if you heard what I was saying there um, in, in relation to what's going on in Syria. I mean, here we are all again, nearly 13, 14 years after the uh, illegal invasion of Iraq. We're nearly at it again now with Syria. And you've got the propaganda machine now going in full swing. I just read a poll there today on Sky News that 50% of all Brightons, i.e. British people, agree with the missile strikes in Syria. So I'm thinking within four days of them launching those missiles, 30 plus million people in England have been interviewed about their views on what's going on. Um, well, the fact that Theresa May actually went ahead with it without going to um, Parliament <coughs> is a bit concerned because, you know, ideally she should have asked the people first because mm. it's not her choice. I was watching the talk that she did and she said, I made the decision. And say, hang on, who the hell are you? You know, the people are there. You're there because the people vote you in and you're supposed to do what the people want you to do. So, who said that you can go off and make the decision? We didn't decide. I'm sure people in the UK didn't decide for them to go in uh, America to to bomb Syria. So, who gave you the authority or the power to do that? This is the problem. But if we forget about the kind of the, the war, the, the bombing that's going on at the moment, we have to ask ourselves, why is it happening and why Syria? And you mentioned there at the start about they don't have a central bank in North Korea, it's probably the same. But at the moment, what's happening on a global scale is that the elites are being exposed for what they've been doing. You know, over periods of time, over the last couple of years, more and more information has been coming out as to who's been doing what, when and where. And so the elites, what they want to do is they not only want to obviously take over the Middle East, but they want World War Three because if that reduces the population and wipes out uh, you know, a certain few million, um, quite a lot of people, if they're using nukes, then um, they get away with what they've been doing mm. because they'll go down to their their like underground bases or their silos if a nuclear war starts. They'll be protected. They'll come back up, and then you know the planet will be devastated, and and that's it. But I personally don't see a World War Three happening. I just don't see it happening. Something inside me says. It's not going to happen, and because it won't be allowed to happen for a lot of reasons. Do you think that they're trying to, like, deliberately kick it off? Though I mean, they're poking the the, the big bear, i.e., the Russians, and like fair play to Vladimir Putin, he hasn't even half retaliated back yet. He's just sitting in the wings, waiting to see what's going to happen next. Now he did issue a warning the other day that if they strike Syria again, it's going to cause chaos around the world. What he meant by that is anybody's guess. Well, at the end of the day, you know, one of the things with Trump, Trump is a puppet, right? But as a puppet, he was doing the right things. Now, what we have been told is that we think Trump has been compromised. So 
Trump is kind of irrelevant in the picture to a certain extent. You could get somebody else in and get them to do what Trump is doing, all right? Mm. But it looks like Trump is being compromised, which means he's agreed to go in and do the bombing. Now, there is another spin to this as well, which people are putting out there. And um, one of the things that we were told is that if Trump, the fact that he's in government, and if he, if he was to turn around and go, well, I'm going to sack... 20 of you people, they would think that he's lost the plot and they'd probably commit him and um, get rid of him in some kind of way, right? They'd impeach him or something, right? So what Trump has been doing is he's been saying, right, I'm going to promote you, you come into office. And then as each person comes in, they're being exposed and he's sacking them and letting them go. And he's doing that as one by one. Now, um, if, if you look at, say, the deep state and what's going on with them, They've got bases over in Syria. Now, is it a case that, and this just puts another spin on it, right? Is it a case that Trump is in league with Assad and Putin and he's calling out the deep state and he's playing this game with them thinking, yeah, let's go in and bomb. But what they've done is actually gone in and bombed where the deep state is rather than, you know, the whole kind of chemical thing. Now, uh, there, there, there was an article up there about um, fake uh, footage and actors being pretending they had um, been uh, damaged by chemicals and stuff like that. Mm. Because, we, I mean, look, I mean, the man on the street, the word on the street, and the man on the street will know that Assad is not going to do that to his own people. I'll tell you I one mean, thing that all, struck me. Know. One thing that struck me, Alan, about the um, the news footage of the alleged uh, poison or, you know, the chemical attack on, on these uh people in uh, in Eastern Guta or whatever the, the name of that place was um, they all seem to be children who were affected and you were pouring water over children and stuff like that I didn't see any men or women suffering the same symptoms it was all children yeah because you get the sympathy vote when it's kids but no, it? I know that that's exactly what you get when it, when it involves children but like my point is if you look at that footage closely everyone that's been treated in that hospital room whatever it was they were all children I mean, did, did these chemicals not affect any of the adults? I mean, where yeah, were the well, adults who were allegedly affected by this? Well, there you go. That's a good point. Um, now, the other thing, the other spin on this as well is that if it is the case that Donald Trump has been compromised and he is kind of starting World War Three, or trying to start it, I'm, memory serves me well. Edgar Casey did say that Putin or Russia will actually... Um, join up with China, I think it is, to actually uh, take on America and, and shut them down. So, um, there's something somewhere in the back of my mind, there's an Ed, Edgar Casey prediction saying something like that about Russia, you know, um, getting together with China and fighting uh, the US. But, you know, uh, who knows? In a World War Three scenario? Yeah. It doesn't sound too good now, does it? I put a post up there the other day, and it was a, a, a newspaper article, which you've seen before anyway, um, where an, an agreement had been reached between the British and Irish governments back in the early 1980s that in the event of World War Three, a half a million Irish um, people would be offered up for military service to help the British out. And I put this post up, I think it was last Tuesday or Wednesday, and you want to see the traction it's got. It's had nearly 750 shares in the space of a few days. Yeah. You well, know, would so you believe that that actual article originally came from my dad, who had a copy of that as a newspaper article. Oh, right. And I scanned it in and originally put it up. Oh, so that's where I got it from. Okay, yeah, fair enough. Yeah, yeah, I put it up two or three years ago. Yeah. And then uh, it's obviously done the rounds as well. Yeah, I put it up again the other day now because I have it in my archives. Like, on every now and again, I just post it just to remind people like that. The closer we get to World War Three, that this agreement that was agreed has never been disagreed between both of those governments. So that agreement still stands. Yeah, I mean, to be honest with you, that doesn't surprise me. I mean, who's to say they won't have some kind of um, call-up system like um, what do they call it during World War Two? You had to do your, your Conscription, service. two-year service. But I mean, I look at the way Leo Varadkar has been behaving lately in relation to the British. The British allege that the Russians poisoned the scribbles. I mean, we all know what a bullshit story that was for a start. And yeah. Leo Varadkar was one of the first people on the bandwagon to kick a Russian diplomat out of this country. We're supposed to be a neutral country. It was none of our bloody business, and he should have stayed over. But yeah. because of that, you, know, you can see they, like they're slowly trying to bring this country into an alliance with the British. That's the way I can see it. 
Well, you know Shannon has been used as a drop-off point for the Americans yeah. and the planes coming in. I mean, Shaclair Daly went down with Luke Ming Flanagan, remember, yeah. trying to get in, in the planes to say, we're a neutral country. What the hell are them planes landing here? What's, in, what's inside them? Mm. So it, we lost their neutrality a very, very long time if ago. Have we ever had it to begin with? Yeah, exactly. You know, because exactly. I mean, you know that we've done plenty of shows before on the... the, the what's the word I'm looking for as opposed to the official status of this country oh yeah it's not a sovereign independent republic like we're led to believe that it's still a, under a, under the crown or oh, you yeah, took via the Oireachtas which is a British construct yeah no totally you know totally. so have we ever ha- actually had our neutrality I don't think we ever did no what I, my understanding is that all we got was home rule we're mm. still ruled by London yeah I mean why would London give up Ireland and not give up the US because we know London controls the US as a, you know, I mean, the, the amount of money that's coming out from the, from America to London, I mean, all that taxpayers' money is going to London, mm. and there's money going to Israel as well. So why would they give up Ireland uh, and and keep US when Ireland's right beside them? Of course they wouldn't give it up. And which when you think got- about it as well, I mean, if you look at Ireland compared to other countries that the British have ever occupied, this is one of the jewels in that ground. Of course. So it's again, it's home rule. You know, they said, right, we're going to let you uh, set up your own government, but we're going to, you know, control everything from this end in the shadows. Yeah. You know, so the whole idea of this pretense that we're a republic, we're not a republic. I, I don't think so. I don't believe we are. I believe we're being controlled and always have been. And if at any time we were a republic, we didn't have it for long. We probably got it in 1919 and lost it in 1922. Yeah, that's exactly like that. what happened. Yeah, we're without a shadow of a doubt. That's, a, that's how I say it anyway, Alan. Totally. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Now, getting back to um, Syria, I was listening today to, to because of just pre- like prepping for tonight's show, just to get a bit of up-to-date information and stuff, I listened to a, quite a few interviews with Bashar al-Assad. Um, one in particular was an interview he'd done with an NBC journalist, an American journalist. And I don't know if you've seen any of his interviews online. He speaks very, very, very good English for someone from the Middle East. But he wiped the floor with this guy. Every accusation this guy was making towards him, he was able to defeat his argument. Like, with just pure, simple logic. Well, the thing is, I, I kind of got... I don't get get into the, the whys and wherefores of these things. Because as a, um, a, a chap that we know very well, um, I was speaking to him. We were talking about the Los Angeles shooting. And I said, look... Do you accept that there's a group of people in the world who are like literally nutcases and they will kill and do what they need to do to get what they want? And he said, yes. And I said, right. Well, obviously, Syria is the same thing. So once I know there's nutcases out there and they will do what they do um, to get what they want, then I don't need to get down to the whys and wherefores or the bits and pieces. Now, it's up to people individually, whatever research they want to do. But I'm quite happy to know kind of really on the outskirts what's going on because once you know these people at the top are what they're doing and what their loyal are doing, then you kind of know what's, you know, you get the gist of it. Mm. Um, and um, so, yeah, that's, that's the way kind of where I see it. And there's nothing I can do at this moment in time with Syria. I mean, there's nothing I can do. As a person, I can't do anything, right? What we can do is we can talk about it, we can educate our listeners, but there's nothing I can physically do. So I can't really worry about that. I should, I'm should. i just kind of focusing on the things I can do. Yeah, yeah, but, but that's, probably, that's, you know, you can't say fairer than that. But in the, you know, in the near future, how do you think things might play out out there, Al? Do you think it's going to kick something off or... Um, yeah, it's quite a worry because of the whole kind of immigrant invasion, if you if you want to put it that way, and um, and if you look at the countries like uh, Sweden, Germany, uh, Denmark, and the issues they're having um, with the immigrants now, it just seems to be that a lot of you know um, men at the age of fighting age that seem to be going into these countries. So I've seen very few women and children going in. It seems to be a lot of men. We've seen those massive convoys of immigrants last year crossing over into Europe and like literally thousands of them in, in, in columns and they were all blokes, all aged probably between 18 and 40. That's fighting it, age, exactly. as you said. And there were very, very, very few women and children in those convoys. Yeah. 
fighting age. And, and what they do is basically, uh, you know, the whole idea of the agenda is to water down the nationalities. So you'll get to the stage that you'll be kind of 20% Irish, 20% English, 20% whatever. Mm. And there's got to be a breakdown of that. And that's the whole idea. So the one world government is the whole idea is to water down your nationality. So you won't get any nationalism anymore because you'll never be a full Irishman or a full Englishman or whatever. Um, well, that's their plan. Now, we did a show. This is my third interview in three days, by the way. Is it? So, um, yeah, because right. I, I did the United We Start uh, roundtable on, on Saturday, and then obviously your show last night, and right. obviously your show tonight. So um, there's a lot going on. Um, now, if um, their plan, well, one of the things that we said is their plans are not working, because if their plans were working, we would have been all dead by now. All right? So the fact that we're still alive and on the planet means that they are um, they're struggling. And there's a lot of inf- a lot of stuff coming out. Now, we did say about them trying to push the button for World War Three, And we know that if Hillary got in, that would have been World War III straight away. Yeah, I, I, I definitely believe that, yeah. She's yeah. a psycho, anyway, that one. Oh, she's a, she's a complete nutcase. But the fact that Trump got in, and it was kind of orchestrated that way as well, um, with the good guys. Now, you know, the whole idea is that Trump has been pulled from pillar to post, and there's been numerous attempts on his life, and even his um, his wife, um, I forget her name now. Melania. Melania. She had a, apparently an envelope with powder in it the other day, or last week. Um, so they are so they are trying to take him down. Now, whether he's been compromised now with this war thing, or whether it's a it's kind of a, an illusion for the public saying that we're going in and doing war but what he's doing is taking out the deep state that could be a possibility as well so i'm keeping an open mind to that but um i like like everything we say we always say look we don't know what's going to happen and it's always good to have uh, some prepping um done regarding your food and water and stuff like mm. that because we you don't know and i think that that um, that uh, beast from the east that we had recently kind of woke a lot of people up especially the people that were snowbound and couldn't get out yeah um, and like we were we were stuck we're, we're on the, i'm on walton's mountain and i was stuck for a few days now lucky we had supplies in it wasn't too bad but we had like three or four days where we couldn't get out and lucky we had supplies in um and i think that kind of woke up a lot, a lot of people up thinking that if anything like that happened you know where what would what would happen to family? What would happen to them? Yeah, I mean, I so, was amazed at how quick the shops emptied. Like, I mean, a few inches of bloody snow and the whole country went into chaos. It was ridiculous. Yeah, you could buy you could buy ho- ho- uh, what you call it, heroin dead easy, but get, getting a loaf of bread was unbelievable. Oh, it, was, it was nearly impossible to get a loaf of bread. Yeah. But I mean, uh, the, the gas thing is, though, Alan, I mean, in a situation like that, why would you want to buy a load of milk and bread? You're hardly going to bloody live on tea and toast for a few days. You know, go for the canned products, stuff that you can use long term, you know. Well, this is the thing. This is the whole idea of prepping and, and being ready uh, and being organised and, and having uh, some um, bits and pieces. Now, I have, to, I have to stock up myself again, just as a backup, you know, just uh, there's no harm having it because you don't know what's going to happen. I mean, they say that, you know, if the, if the system, I think we have three days of food supplies available. Even if that, Al, I mean, as you said, with that snow, the, the, them, them shops emptied pretty, pretty quickly. Exactly, exactly. They, 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 they went very quickly. And um, people were running in and buying everything up. So, again, it, it's about prepping. And it's, it's amazing that when you have at least, you know, if you have two weeks of food available to your family and water and stuff like that, it's amazing how relaxed you are when a situation happens because you're kind of chilled and you go, yeah, well, I'm kind of covered, you know. I mean, yeah. we had, as you know, Mick, I have set up um, uh, an emergency backup system for the for the house, mm. and um, we did, lucky enough that we didn't lose any power with the beast from the east. But if we did, I would have had emergency backup for a good few hours anyway to get us uh, to get us by. Um, so you know, again, that's another backup plan. But you know, yeah, it, I mean, as you said though, it's better to have it and not need it than not have it and need it. That's and you that's know? a great saying. And it's it is a great saying. Up. Listen, I need yeah. to go to a set of ads, Al, so you hang on there for a couple of minutes. Folks, nope. I'm going to be back in two minutes with Alan from Open Your Mind Radio. Talk to you very shortly. You're listening to Lizzie Sound on 96.4 FM. 
Now folks, you're very welcome back. The text line is 087-062-7138. That's 087-062-7138. And you can also check out the Facebook page for the show. The Facebook page is called The World You Don't Know. And you can also check Al's website out. It's oamradio.com. oamradio.com. Al does a great show every Sunday night from 7 till 9 um, online with his, uh, his sidekick, Steve. And an absolutely amazing show. I love his show. It's great. Always well worth a listen. Anyway, Al, um, are you still there? You are. I am DJ. That's brilliant. Now, uh, just uh, we were talking about Syria again before the break, and I'm going to stick with Syria for the next few minutes before we move on to something else. Um, as I said, what's going on out in Syria? Most people just think that, you know, because of the mainstream media's propaganda and stuff like that, that, you know, we have this tyrant living out there called Bashar al-Assad, but nothing could be further from the truth. And as I mentioned at the top of the show, Syria is one of the only countries in the world that does not have a central bank in it, i.e. a Rothschild-owned central bank, and which is part of the, the global um, banking system. And they're desperate to get a bank in there because of the oil reserves and stuff like that that he has in that country. Um they're trying to basically shore up the whole of the Middle East to get their hands on the resources, to basically to keep America ticking over. That's what this is really all about, is to keep America going and to keep this Western um, economy going. But I think it, it, it's all falling apart, Alan, isn't it? I think the whole system is starting to crumble, and this is why they're trying to get a grip on it. Yeah, the system is, is falling apart. I mean, America is insolvent, right? And they keep kicking the, uh, the, the can down the road. And I was given the date... Well, I was, I was told that uh, possibly at the end of September this year, they're not going to get any more money, right? No more money. At the moment, um, they are being funded by, well, you probably heard us talking about a group called the Foundation. I have, I've moment, heard it before, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, the Foundation are actually helping to fund them to keep, things, to keep them ticking over. But I think the carpet's going to be pulled on the end of September. So we've been told that that might change, but at the end of September, that's the, so that's the third quarter. And um, basically all the banks are insolvent. All the banks, they don't have money, you know. So what they're doing is, um, they're like, it's like you having a tenor, Mick, and you, you, you're, you're showing the tenor to people and you go, look, I have 10 euro. And then you're giving it to a friend of yours and your friend is going, look, I have 10 euro too. But it's the same 10 euro because they're using what's called mirrored accounts. Mirror okay, accounts. So, Can you explain that? Al? Yeah, basically they're just du- re- duplicating, do du- duplicating accounts, right. and they're trying to say to people that we have it with that ten year, that ten euro is theirs. Look at it here. Basically, it's the same account, but it's replicated. Right. So it's fraud, right? basically. Yeah, I mean it's all, it's all, it's all false. Right. It's all, it's all false. Um, and uh, because they're trying to prove to maybe the central banks or they're trying to prove to the governments that they're, look, we have money, we are, we know we have assets here. And one of the things that we were told when we had Thomas and Kim on the show from the foundation was that everybody's saying, why is, does, why is there a massive move on for repossessions in Ireland? And uh, why are they kind of selling the houses off and making offers and all that? And the reason why is because the banks ha- need assets. If they're going to and be able to trade and do business. They need to be able to present a certain amount of money or assets on their books. You know, gold or property or stuff like that. So tangible, something you can put your hands on money, not just early fairy money like they've been printing for the last 100 years or so. Exactly. So basically they need tangible assets to go to the central bank in in Europe and to say, look, you know, we have these assets, we can trade, we're... we're, we're, um, uh, so you know, there's no problems with our, our banking and our accounting. We have we have the funding and the assets there, but did, and this is why the vulture funds have come in because the vulture funds are buying the properties, even though they're buying them for pennies on the pound. They're still buying the properties because remember that's fractional reserve banking and the money was created there with thin air, mm. and uh, so it didn't cost them anything for the banks to do that. Now, one thing people need to know, need to know about banking is that banking is not there to help you. Banking was set up to rob you, right? Banking was set up to rob the people. That's what it does. And it robs the people by obviously giving you money that doesn't exist because they pull it out of thin air and they charge you interest, which is pulled out of thin air as well. Now, Vin has been putting posts up on his Facebook and Vin is a great man for putting out good information like that. He does do his research. I'll give him that and he finds out an awful lot of stuff. But he put a post up there, I think it was yesterday or the day before, uh, just informing people. Like, when you get a mortgage... 
the, the, and you sign for your mortgage, yes, you create the mortgage and stuff like that, and you create that money, but the interest to pay on that mortgage cannot and is never created. How you cannot create interest. Well, the thing is, I suppose the way, the way I look at it with interest is, if there was only a thousand pound in the, in the world, right, and two people come for a loan, and I give five hundred to one and five hundred to to the other. Exactly. Where's the where's interest. the money gonna come for the interest? It can't be created. It can't be created. So how does it? How does where does that come from? So this is the problem. Usury, which is you know what it's another name for interest, um, is the is the cause of the problem. And that's why we're in debt. That's why it's a Ponzi scheme. It's a pyramid system. And it's all collapsing at the moment because people are beginning to not deal with the banks. They're not taking loans out. Um, and same with the, the, the credit union as well. A credit union has to have a certain a, a amount in. So if you save, I think if you save €100, Euro, they have to back it up with €10 Euro or something like that. And people are saving more and taking less loans out. So they're not making money. Um, now, I did go into detail, you know, a few weeks ago, and we went into more detail with this. I don't have the figures in my head at the moment. But if people are to take less loans out with the banks and deal, don't deal with the banks, then obviously the banks um, are going to be struggling because they make the money from loans and the interest they charge on the loans. Now, there's been a, a few protests. Now, I've noticed a few protests against by uh, particularly uh, one bank in particular. Um, I won't mention the name on air, um, but it was the bank that was involved in a recent eviction up in the Balbriggan area, so I think you know what bank I'm talking about. But um, there was a lot of protesters who were basically shutting those banks down during the week, four or five of them banks, by bringing it to their doors and telling them no evictions in Ireland. Yeah, I, I love the uh, the name they actually called the group, uh, the Flying Column. <laughs> the which? If they call the group the flying, they have flying columns. Oh, flying columns. Now, I think that ha came about from a Michael Collins uh, original arrangement. Now, I could be wrong, right. but I think Michael Collins had flying columns. Did you think, uh, look, I, I've been doing this show seven years, and I've seen a, a, an awful lot of serious change going on in this country, both politically and with the way this country has been perceived around the world, and particularly in Europe, um, especially on the Fianna Gael and stuff like that, uh, it really, this country is slowly, slowly, and it, it seems to be even getting faster now, being turned into a fascist dictatorship. Not that it wasn't before, but it's getting more open about it now. Yeah, of course. Yeah, of course. They're getting very blatant. I mean, I know I know. Vin talks a lot about the Constitution and the dwelling and everything else. But well, it's got to the stage that the fascist state, you don't give a damn. I, but that, that was, was going to be my next comment. You know, I'm fair play to Vin, and I, 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 I admire the man greatly. He has done some absolutely fantastic work in explaining to the people in very, very simple English language exactly what your rights are under the Constitution and what that actually means. But it's a whole different kettle of fish going into a court and getting them to obey that Constitution. Exactly, that, and that's the thing. It, you know, I mean, it, it was there uh, by our, put, given to us by our forefathers. And um, Vin does great work with educating people and, and showing people all about it. But at the end of the day, the example of that, um, that company going into Balbriggan, they didn't give a damn about the Constitution. They were going to do what they wanted to do. Corfin was the same thing. They wanted, they turned up with their ballot lavas on, with their registration plates covered with gaffer tape. If they were doing, going by the law of the land, they wouldn't need to wear ballot lavas or gaffer tape on registration plates. They knew what they were doing was wrong, and that's why they covered them up. And this is why Ireland has gone down the fascist route. And um, what we're trying to do is, um, we, we know, well, what we've been told, right, is the foundation um, is actually working with the, the majority, if not all, the governments of the world at the moment, and they know what's been um, and they know what's been going on. And there's, I'm sure there's a couple of politicians in the Irish government who know what's going on as well with the foundation. So it's just going to be a matter of time. But the problem is, is that America has to be dealt with first, because once de once America is dealt with and sorted, then all the other countries bit by bit will be done. Now, if you just imagine, there's 489 things that have to be changed globally, right? Now, that's 489. One of them is the monetary system. One of them is the financial system. So there's like 488 left to do. Mm. So we might not see certain changes in our lifetime, Mick, because it's going to take a long time to sort out. 
but it will be sorted out over time. Um, I, I am seeing shoots of positive stuff happening. Um, like the, the Vera Toomey thing, very well done to Vera. She won, she the, won the Person award. of the Year award, yeah, and very well deserved yeah. as well. Very well deserved. That kind of highlights what's um, going on. And obviously the push is now on because she has legalised um, the medicine for her Now, I've seen a report today in the paper as well. I was reading today's online herald. Not that I read it that often, but I just happened to click onto it today. And one of the headlines in it was uh, the leader of the Green Party. I can't think of his name now. Um, his name escapes me. You might be able to think of his name, Albert. Um, he's the leader of the uh, the Green Party. He was a minister before in one of the coalition governments. But he's pushing, they're going to be pushing now to have cannabis legalised, the way it is in Holland, i.e. coffee shops popping up all over Dublin. Now, I think the reason they're doing this, and it's the same with the injection centres. I mean, I watched a documentary there last week, I think it was prime time, in relation to an injection centre on... Um, on Russia's Key, down in, in in Dublin 8, and literally behind the school there, not too far from Cook Street, it's St. Audience School, which was a school I went to, I made my communion in that school. And the, it was discussed, and the, the teacher herself, the head teacher of that school, was filming drug addicts injecting themselves across the road. And there are certain people who are pushing to have an injection centre built, well, installed not too far from the school in a, a, a drug treatment centre that's already there and has been there for a very long time. But I think the push for these drug treatment centres, if you look at it all over the grand scheme of things, I grew up in Dublin South Inner City in the 1980s and the area I grew up in was probably one of the most ravaged areas from the heroin I, I mean most of my friends I grew up in are all dead now um, or from heroin overdoses and stuff like that and, and, and related diseases and illnesses and whatnot. But um, and the government's never done a damn bloody thing about any of it they just let the community rot to bits from the inside out now here's, here's my thoughts on why they are going to be going down the legal route as me and you have discussed many many times in our show Al the cashless society is on its way you know, we're all using our cards now more and more. You know, we've been forced to use them. It's because it's, it's just the way things are going now. And eventually, if they do have a cashless society, you cannot have a cashless society alongside an illegal drugs network. Because the two just don't flow because you cannot get drugs on... You can get them on credit, but you still have to pay with cash. So if there's no cash, you can't hardly get your drugs and go to your local drug dealer and say, hey, will you swipe me card for me? Because he's not one going. He doesn't want to go down that route. So the governments have to take over the distribution of drugs now and take it away from the criminals once and for all. And the only way to do that is to legalise the whole bloody lot of it. Yeah, well, it's uh, it's uh, Eamon Ryan from the Green Party. Eamon Ryan, that's the guy's name. Yes, about. yep. And it's uh, something that we'll be mentioning on the show next week. And I think it's it's definitely a step forward. They even talked about letting people grow two plants. Yeah, yeah grow two plants in your own house in yeah. their back garden. I think in Spain you're allowed to grow six right. to be classed as um, uh, just for personal, personal use. use for health and reasons. I think, and I think they're believing it now. The necessity is the mother of all all inventions. So, um, for the drug dealers, you know, they'll probably find some way to even with a cashless society where it does credit going to be built up somewhere along the line where they'll have a credit system and a fencing system for stolen goods or something. You know, I, I you know, it's like hackers and computers. When people turn around and go, oh, you can't hack the system within about a day or probably a few hours. Somebody does. Because you're putting the the challenge out there to yeah. hackers. So, you know, the drug dealers will do the same thing. But look, cannabis, we know, is a plant. Mm. And so many people have so many benefits. For people who um, didn't see it, the, the lady that was on um, ITV this morning with um, Holly Willoughby and Philip Schofield, <clears throat> and she went on the show and she was taking cannabis oil. She was riddled with cancer. She had six months to live. She went on the CBD oil, the cannabis oil, and now most of the cancer is gone. And Holly Willoughby and Peter Schofield's uh, mouth was on the floor, or Philip Schofield's mouth was on the floor because he couldn't believe it. And the guy that was beside the girl was very good. He, he, I think he was some kind of consultant, but not a doctor. And when he spoke to him about it, he said, well, he said, it was very good how he did it. He said, well, if you were a conspiracy theorist, you would, uh, you'd be thinking that, well, maybe they want to keep the CBD illegal because the pharmaceutical industry will lose loads of money and their, their bottom line would be affected. But that's if you're a conspiracy theorist. And I'm sure people were thinking, actually, that makes sense. That would make sense because, you know, I've spoken to people about, you know, cannabis and stuff like that. And the first thing I say is, have you done any research on it? And they mm. go, no. And so, so you don't know why it's illegal. 
well, you know, it's a drug. And I said, is that right? I said, so, and then I get into the history of the DuPont family mm. and, and why they were in co competition with the hemp growers and they lobbied to get it made illegal because it was competing with what they were doing. Mm. That's the only reason why cannabis and hemp is illegal because it was business competition in the early 1900s. And the world back then, even though they tell us that we, um, we enjoy better health these days, I've never heard such a bullshit story because if you think the amount of illnesses that are out there now, whether it's Alzheimer's, dementia, heart disease, you know, high cholesterol, everything, high blood pressure, people didn't have this stuff a hundred years ago because no. people were allowed to use natural remedies like, you know, um, St. John's wort, cannabis oil, stuff like that, whatever, you know, natural herbs. Yeah, and of course we had proper vegetables um, and we had all the, the, the proper... Um, uh, enzymes in the food. I mean, my grandfather, um, when he used to have his dinner, he used to put his mug into the cabbage water and drink the cabbage yeah, water. Yeah, my dad did the same as well. You know, th this was years ago. I mean, you wouldn't do that now because God knows what pesticides are on the bloody food. Yeah. So they, they want a sick world because sick people are money to the pharmaceutical industry. Yeah, it's big and business. At this, at this moment in time, I'm seeing a lot of um, people around me um, suffering, you know, health wise. Now, there, there are kind of just talk about as to what what's happening. You know, people talk about, you know, you want to look at the bigger picture. The energy is hitting the planet and it's affecting people in all different ways. And people are feeling some things and other people aren't feeling anything. And there's a lot of people passing over as well. And I don't know why at this particular time that's happening. And, I mean, I was looking at a, 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 bit, a bit of stuff today. If you want to go down the Christian route, the Christians are all going on about the rapture, as are the, 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 uh, the Jewish people. And they're saying, and they're trying to align all the planets and the suns and, you know, the Shemitah and all this kind of stuff to say that, oh, yeah, apparently April 23rd or is it April 18th or is it April the 25th or... You know, again, they're coming out with all. Well, I think every time there's a new date for the, you know, when the for the end of the world when it passes, did someone always going to run another date after that? You know. Well, put it this way, there is going to be one date that's going to be right. <laughs> well, that's it. You know what? I couldn't say, couldn't put it better myself. But you know, April. I remember the last few years, and this is just an observation I have made. When it comes to the global elite and the bullshit false flag stuff, April is a very busy month for them. Particularly the twenty third, between the twenty third and the end of April, it tends to be a busy time. So, you know, it's what now it's the sixteenth today. So, yeah, I think maybe it's it. People need to look at their satanic uh, calendar, because um, a lot of these uh, uh, cabal people, elites are big into the rituals and numerology mm. and astrology and they have to do rituals on a certain time, certain date, um, on a certain way. Um, and yeah, it doesn't surprise me that, you know, what's going on, there's, there's obviously, and maybe that's what's going on as well in, in Syria, I don't know. And yeah. um, There's probably something tied into there. Um, I know there's, i I seen an article um, posted up on Facebook there that um, Hillary Clinton and Huma does a apparently does a snuff video going around with them two in it? I was saying uh, something about that yesterday, yeah. But when I clicked on the link, it didn't work. Yeah, well, they're being exposed, and we heard that they were gonna they're gonna be Clinton, Hillary Clinton, and Humor are gonna be more and more exposed and out in the public. Um, and um, so I seen an article where there's a snuff movie. Apparently, they there's a little girl that the two of them are, you know, doing the sacrificing on. Uh, not very nice. These people are very sick. They are very, very, very sick. But that doesn't, you know, just because it's Hillary Clinton. I mean, there's people over here in Ireland that are probably doing the same thing. Oh, without a shadow of a doubt. And, and, and people, if people think that we're bullshitting here about what the elites actually get up to, I'd urge you to go onto YouTube or Google and just Google Bohemian Grove, and that'll give you an idea of what these people actually get up to behind closed doors. Well, if you if people go over, and I'm not plugging how I am, but if you go over to our YouTube channel. We did an interview with Ted Gunderson, who was the ex-head of the FBI in Los Angeles. And he did an interview. He's passed away now because they took him out. But his interview actually talks about um, what he found as an investigator and the horror stories he came across. And it's a bloody good interview to get that, you know, to have that as a podcast. Um, and, uh, yeah, it's frightening. And he said everybody's involved, actors, sports people, mm. politicians, media people. They're all, they're all in it. I mean, you hear of these celebrities that, 
you know, but these unexplained deaths and all that. I've always had the, the, the impression, people like Robin Williams and all, that they were about to talk. Yeah, well... And that's, that's why they were that's... taken out, to shut them up, because they know too much. Well, it's like that kind of Suzanne Dando, isn't it? That, that journalist... Jill that Dando. Like, Jill Dando. Jill, Dan- Jill Dando. That um, she was getting very close to it, and they thought... Mm. We'll have to well, take did, uh, do you reckon she was getting close to exposing the BBC paedophiles like Jimmy Savile and politi- political paedophiles in England? So they exactly. had to get rid of her and then blame that poor Irish fella on her death. Yeah, exactly. And, um, I mean, people really need to look at what's going on. And th- the trouble is that we, we have this kind of, I'm OK, Jack, as long as it doesn't affect me, I'm not yeah, bothered. That's the but th- unfortunately, that's a false economy because it's going to come to your door sooner or later. But by that time, it might be too late. And you won't be prepared for it. Al, one more break, so do you mind hanging out for a couple of minutes? Yeah. Folks, we'll be back in two minutes with Alan from OAM. Talk to us very shortly. Local programmes, local presenters, local news. Tunes to Lucky Sound 96.4 FM. You're very welcome back, folks. And um, the text line is 0870627138. That's 0870627138. And the Facebook page is called The World You Don't Know. Um, Alan, just before. We, uh, before we go this evening, one more subject I want to cover with you, and it's something I covered with Ian Crane last week, and I just wanted to get your own opinion on it. Is this new 5G network that they're planning to roll out? And uh, there's an awful lot of talk online, and there's a lot of chatter going on about the dangers of it because it short bugs microwaves, and they seem to be cutting down an awful lot of trees, particularly in the UK, to make way for these new masts. Yeah, well, we had uh, you probably know that we had Mark Steele on the show, who's an industry insider who, right. who's very familiar with 5G. And the whole idea is that because of the, the frequency that the 5G is on, it's a, the transmission range is very limited. So what they have to do, and the frequency is on is line of sight, which means one antenna has to see another antenna. Right. So basically, they have to cut down the trees so one of the antennas can see each other. And what they're doing is, um, instead of setting the transmitters to like 0.5 milliwatts, they're sending them the transmission power is going to 0.25 uh, milliwatts and um so sorry it's 25 milliwatts rather than 5 milliwatts and um so it's affecting the 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 kind of the wildlife it's affecting insects and moths and stuff like that and it's like it's like we're going to be sitting in a, a microwave oven it's really really going to be unbelievably bad because if you look at the things that we we they want to roll out. They want to roll out smart meters. Mm. They're rolling out the water meters. Then they have the um, mobile phone mass around. Now they're going to have the 5G as well. Um, and it's all this kind of mesh grid of wireless communications that's going on. And, of course, in the house, people have their Wi-Fi, have their deck phones, and have mobile phones. So it's it's just, you know, unbelievable that we're going to see a massive epidemic of brain tumours and cancers and and all all illnesses, all them type of um, uh, related illnesses. We're going to see a hell of a lot more over the next few years if they roll out the uh, smart meters and the 5G as well. Now, is the 5G operating anywhere in the world at the moment or are we still on the 4G networks? No, they're rolling out 5G in the UK and apparently does... Um, a town down in Dingle, that they're a village or a town down there that they're going to be experimenting. They're, that's going to be the trial village or town. In Ireland? In Ireland, Dingle. Right down yeah. in Kerry. Dingle down in Cork, yeah. In Kerry, Dingle in, uh, is in Kerry. Sorry. Yeah, yeah Dingle in Kerry. Kerry. So, uh, but for the consumer, because the big problem we have in this world, Al, is, I mean, myself and yourself and everybody who does shows like what we do, we research all of this stuff. So, uh, you know, we, we look a lot closer at um, the effects that this technology can have on humanity, you know, health effects and stuff like that. But for most people, and I don't like using the word sheeple because I think it's a derogatory term, um, but for most people who don't look at this kind of stuff, so and are just going along to get along, minding their own business, trying to live their lives the best they can, they will see this as a, 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 an unbelievable convenience. You know, like super, super fast broadband and stuff like that, and they'd be delighted to have it. Yeah, yeah well, of course. I mean, it's so integrated into society at the moment that the, our, the Irish government or any governments... Um, will be uh, they choose deniability because if people they turned around and said oh by the way and um, wi-fi has never been ratified or never been approved in ireland and it's a uh, dangerous to your health the, the the irish government will be sued for billions and trillions so they have to use deniability and again you have to look back at the history of what went on and who approved it and um, so this is why we had walter graham on the show as well 
And if people want to challenge the local schools or the local libraries or whatever, you go in and ask for the risk assessment to prove that Wi-Fi is safe. They won't have one because Wi-Fi is not safe. Even Lloyds of London will, will insure everything, but they don't uh, insure Wi-Fi um, or mobile phone technology because they know it's dangerous. And like these ministers and stuff like that, people who signed, you know, signed the licenses to have all this crap installed in people's countries, you know, like a big Wi-Fi network and stuff like that. I mean, surely they must realise that if it is detrimental to, to human health, it's also detrimental to theirs. Or, uh, or do they have some sort of medications that no one else has access to that counteract any effects it might have on them? No, it's just ignorance. They're told what to do. They're told what to sign. They'll kick the ball down the road. We know, remember in Ireland, we had thalidomide and we had asbestos. And it was only 20 years later that they turned around and go, oh, yeah, my bad. You know, uh, the mm. government saying, my bad. We made a mistake. We didn't get a check. So you have to remember... The people that are in our government who are politicians are like like you and me and Joe Blow. Well, not you and me because we're educated and we actually know what's going on. Um, but these people are just the Joe Soaps who are known around the local area and they go to the funerals and go to the hospitals and they go to the wakes and people go, oh, yeah, Jimmy, yeah, he's very good. I'm going to give him a vote because the people's concept or understanding of politics is you know minimal mm. they don't really know the bigger picture they just think that oh yeah jimmy's a nice guy i'm gonna vote for him they think more on a community level than they are on a global level which is fair yeah, enough exactly. you know that's understandable of course jimmy goes in now he could jimmy could be he might own a bicycle repair shop or he might might um you know have some occupation and he goes in and he goes and they say right jimmy we're going to make you in charge of transport and Jimmy will go, well, I know nothing about transport. Uh, don't worry. We have the civil serpents there. They, I'll say serpents, not servants. <laughs> they, 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 they will feed you all the crap that, you know, you need to know. And then you can just come in and present it in the doll, pretending you know what you're talking about. Yeah. Happy days. Um, seriously, it's, it's so screwed up. I mean, if that was a corporate company, 90% of the people would be sacked. You know, you don't make the IT manager in charge of marketing and you don't make the marketing manager in charge of sales. They're qualified in that area, yeah. so that's the area you should be in. Why get somebody, if you get somebody who's an expert in communications, why put them in charge of bloody education? Yeah, it's all compartmentalised as well, isn't it? So, you know, it's exactly. a need-to-know basis. Yeah, exactly. So, and this is it. And so the, 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 the senior politicians at the top who have been there since... God knows how long, know exactly how the system works. And they put in, like, uh, we call um, Joe, George Lee. George Lee, you know, Fine Gael very quickly, went in, nine months later, came out, realised it's institutionalised. And if you try and put a bill in, and it's not really for the benefit of the party, um, or you try and rock the boat, you get kicked out. Look, that's the way the system works. And it's a, a cesspit of corruption. And that's just my own opinion and how I feel about it. Um, well, I think and the whole political right. system in this country is absolutely corrupt. Well, politics in, in, in itself is corrupt. You know, um, now, there are politicians that we know that are good people, but they're independents, yeah. and they, they've no power. And there's even one or two of them are a bit torn coats, you know, I won't mention any names, but we've seen that over the last, you know, t year, with um, so-called independents getting elected into the Dáil, or into the Oireachtas, and yeah. now they just, you know, they're doing the opposite of what they said they were going to do when they got in. That's it, and it filters down to the local level. So if you look at lo local councils, the councils are full of Fine Gael, Fine Fáil, Labour people. How, t how does that work out? I mean, they're literally everywhere. And now, now they're starting young Fine Gael, young Fine Fáil, young Labour. You know, they're getting the young people in to mm. brainwash them. Uh, you know, it's just, you know, the survival of the party is paramount. So they will do anything. And there was a sacrifice anybody, like if you're in the party and you're not pulling the strings and doing the right thing, they'll get rid of you because the, the survival of the party is paramount. Mm. I mean, I've seen, it's, funny you should mention that now, um, one of our good mutual friends, Trevor down below in the southeast, um, I don't know if you've seen his post the other day, he had a little bit of a, a ding dong at his, his local allotments. Unfortunately, he came across some very unfavourable people who didn't take too kindly to... Uh, to Trevor and he looked for a reason to get rid of him and he got one. He gave them a reason and they got rid of the poor man. Yeah, but the, it's 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 on it. It's real. It does, it does a lot of people have the small-minded people 
And uh, ignorance is defined in the dictionary as a lack of knowledge. Yeah. So the small-minded, ignorant people out there who don't understand politics who, uh, politics, who don't get it, they treat it like the supporting a bloody football team, yeah. not realizing that these people are destroying the country and des- destroying people. Um, and it, it's unbelievable. It really is unbelievable. And as we try and do our radio shows, and we try and go out, we try and educate people. Man, you know, it's going to take a long time. It is going to yeah. take a long time. I'm at this seven years, Ala, nearly, uh, I think you're at it just as long as I am. And I'm not disheartened, not 100% disheartened, because if I was, Ala, I'd stop doing this. Or I really would. I'd stop. I'd give it up and I'd say, look, I've had a bloody enough. You know, I've, I've tried to tell people uh, all this crap is going on in the world and people need to wake up and try and do something about it, you know. And it starts with, with the individual as well. And, you know, collectively then we can hopefully do something about what's going on in this world. But um, I, 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 I will never lose hope, and I, you know, because... To, you know, there's too much good in humanity to allow it to sink to the depths that they're trying to sink it down to, you know. But um, well, the, problem, the problem is, I think, Mick, is that if you did give it up, you'd be biting your nails because you want to go back out and do it because that's what, that's the drive. That's, well, that's what drives me to, to, to do this show every week, you know, because people say to me, you know, do you not run out of steam doing the show? And so sometimes you do. Sometimes you feel like you're banging your head off a brick wall trying to get the information out there to people, you know, just to, you know, like... Like this morning, for example, like I was with a group of people this morning, and you know, first thing Monday morning, you're talking about the, the weekend's events and the news and stuff like that. And I'm gonna say, no, oh, see, the Americans are not gonna shit out that scumbag out in Syria. And I'm sitting there, like, biting me, me lip, like saying, well, I'm not gonna say nothing, you know. But, yeah. um, and you know, like, geez, these poor people are brainwashed, and yet they're intelligent people in other respects. Yeah, yeah. No, it's just look, it's the, all it is is a lack of information. And again, people will give their opinions. But, but, and they treat their opinions as fact. And you kind of go, well, no, no, that's an opinion. Where's the fact to back it up? Yeah. Because, you know, we, we have the facts. Here's the facts. I actually had this conversation with a guy today I was talking to, and I was explaining him the psychology of how the mind works. So forget about the content, you know, and people love giving their opinion. Oh, they love giving their opinion. But when you ask them for the facts, oh, well, I don't, I don't actually have any facts. Yeah. Right, okay, so but you're giving me your opinion. Well, I don't want your opinion. You know, if, unless you have the facts, I'm not interested. Yeah, exactly. Uh, listen, I've got about three minutes left, and what I want to do is I want to tell you, because uh, to throw a bit of light humour into uh, this evening's proceedings, I've got a joke for you, Al, that contains your favourite word. Go on. Right. Now, I want you to listen carefully. There's a lady at a funeral, and she's sitting there, and it's her husband's funeral, and she's sitting in the church, and this gentleman comes up to her and says, I knew your husband a long time, he says. Do you mind if I grew up and say a word? And she says, no, not at all. So he stands up and he says, plethora. And he sits back down and the woman says, thanks very much, that means a lot. <laughs> I knew you'd like that one, Al, because that's your favourite word. <laughs> well, I got that off Steve. Steve uses the word Petra all the time. He does, so, yeah, he does, yeah. Very good. So, I thought you'd like that one. Well, listen, Al, I have come up to the end of the show and I want to say thank you very much for coming on. It's been a, a bit of a blast the last hour. Thanks very much. No problem. Thanks for having me, right. And I'll talk to you again soon. Ladies and gentlemen, if you want to go on to Al's website, it's uh, oemradio.com. Great website. Go on and check it out. Listen to Al and Steve's show every Sunday night. Uh, listen, I'll catch you again. You take it handy, OK? Take care. Thanks for and having you. me. Take Bye-bye. care, Mick. No have problem. Bye-bye. Now, ladies and gentlemen, that was um, Alan James from Open Your Mind Radio. Um, always a pleasure to have Alan on the show. He's uh, he's always a breath of fresh air and full of knowledge. He's a great man for the knowledge, you know. So um, it's always a pleasure to have him on. You can check out his website. It's www.oamradio.com. Um, he's got the podcast page on there, and he's got some great shows with some great guests from all around the world talking about a myriad of different subjects, or should I say a plethora of different subjects. <laughs> anyway, folks, this has been The World You Don't Know. And remember, the world is full of great people. If you can't find one, be one. Until next week, talk to you all again soon. The very word secrecy is repugnant in a free and open society. And we are, as a people, inherently and historically opposed to secret society, to secret oath, and to secret proceedings. Waking humanity, one soul at a time. This is The World You Don't Know Radio Show with your host, Nick O'Connell.